is Minecraft worth picking up for the Nintendo Switch? Well, we're going to find out. Now before we get into the unboxing, I highly recommend that you go check out my last video after you watch this one. I unboxed the Skull & Co grip case for the Nintendo Switch and it is by far the best Nintendo Switch accessory that I've picked up. Um, it makes the Switch way more comfortable. So yeah, go check out that video after this one. So let's get into the unboxing. If you haven't already, please smash that subscribe button. We're almost at the finish line for a thousand subs and I need your help to get us over. So, the last time I played Minecraft was probably back in like 2013 or 2015 on the PC. Hell, I owned a few Minecraft servers back then and made a bunch of friends on it. I played around with mods and back then we had such a fun community. We built houses, caves, mines, towns, cities and huge structures like coliseums. And it was such a blast. So the game's probably changed quite a bit since I last played it. Microsoft did buy it and they've added a lot of like DLC and digital content so it'll be interesting to see what's changed. So on the back here it says create anything you can imagine and customise your game with free updates, community creations, explore the depths of your own infinite worlds, amazing community made maps, servers, thrilling mini games and more, survive online with friends on console, mobile and Windows 10 or share in the adventure at split screen. Um, it's got a Super Mario mashup pack so it does have some exclusive Nintendo DLC and if you are playing online you will need a Nintendo Switch online subscription. So the great thing about this game is that it is crazy cross-platform meaning if you have friends on the PC version the Xbox the PS4 or even mobile you will be able to play with them and you'll be able to join community servers from all from across all different kinds of devices so let's cut in and see what we get inside I'm not expecting anything special in here I'm not expecting any DLC or any little leaflets um, as you know with Nintendo games and all games in general companies have really cut down on that sort of stuff um, most of the time the case is just empty with the game cut so let's open it up and before we do anything else let's get that new game smell let's open it up and smell the inside of the case Ooh. So here is the, the game cart. As I, suspect, as I suspected there's nothing else in just the game cart um, and it looks like every other little game cart out there now what I found interesting is that when you boot up the game you're greeted by a digital screen reader and it asks if you want to leave it enabled or turn it off. I decided to turn it off as it sounded a bit creepy to me. Screen reader support is enabled by default. Would you like to turn this off? Turn off button. You'll also have to connect your Microsoft account if you want to play online cross platform and earn achievements in the game. To connect your Microsoft account, it's not a case of logging in on the Switch, it will ask you to visit a web address on a different device like your phone or PC, enter a code and log in on that. Now after you get done with that process of logging in, you'll be greeted to a splash screen telling you about the latest bug fixes and updates, and after that, onto the menu. Now I decided to take a quick look at the marketplace as I've never experienced it before or played the console version so I was curious to see what it's all about and it was absolutely loaded with an amazing variety of featured skin packs, worlds to download, texture packs and more. It's kind of amazing really, um, doing this back in the PC version years ago was a bit of a hassle so doing it as easy as this is a great feature and it does look like it has in-game transactions with game credits being used to purchase items though so I'm not so sure how I feel about that. You can even search for content and as, as you can see I did a quick search for Halloween as it's nearly Halloween and I found a lot of cool Halloween stuff so I really like that. So next up, I decided to take a look at the in-game settings and see what we could change. And surprisingly, there's a ton of settings in there to play around with. I didn't know how I would adjust going from a mouse and keyboard to a controller on Minecraft, but it doesn't look like it's going to be too bad. Um, you can customize things quite a lot, change your texture packs in here, and oh my god, look, they've got a Toy Story mashup pack. What I also quite liked is that they've got a how to play section where you can learn all the basics of the game like crafting, your inventory, your weapons and tools. So that's really good for new players. Another thing this game has is achievements. Now I was super bummed when I found out the Switch didn't support achievements. But I'm glad that developers like Mojang are baking them into the game at least. So that's definitely a good thing. 
So yeah, as for playing, we've got a ton of different options. We can join or create our own worlds if we want to and play and tinker with all the little settings. You've also got the option to join your friends or servers that you find on the web, like on forums or Reddit or anything. And you could also see a list of future, featured servers making playing online super easy. So guys, let's jump in and create my own world and see how the controls feel. One thing to note is that you, if you have a system exclusive content pack like the Nintendo mashup skins, they're not cross-platform compatible so you won't be able to use them on cross-platform multiplayer. So we're going to name our first world Blaze 2 Keys World, I know, I'm super boring. But as you can see, we have quite a few options like the ability to play in survival or creative modes, crank the difficulty and online functionality like allowing your friends to join your world. So you've really got a lot of options to play with here if you're creating your own world. Um, there's a lot of stuff like fire spreading, friendly fire, you can have it show the coordinates, immediate respawn, have it set to always daytime, a lot of stuff. So let's see how long it takes to create the world. This is a real time test on the Nintendo Switch. It'll be interesting to see how long it loads the world and gets us into the game. So we're still waiting. And is that it? There we go, we're in. Not bad, not bad at all. So as you can see, I did enable coordinates, so it's shown coordinates at the top left. And what's interesting that it never had in the original version of the game is it doesn't, it never had a little 3D representation of yourself on the top left. But it appears this one did, this one does, or at least it did a minute ago. Um, but yeah, um, movement in the game is really easy. I'm actually surprised how good it is. Come to the mouse and keyboard. I mean obviously it's not going to replace the mouse and keyboard but it's actually really not bad and it's certainly playable. The graphics look as good as they do on the PC version or the PS4 and Xbox but one one area that I think you'll notice the difference in is the draw distance meaning that you can't see as far into the distance as you can on more powerful systems. Now, so overall, I'm very happy with how this game looks and runs on the Switch. Now, the game isn't for everyone, but I do have a lot of nostalgia for this game as I used to play it quite a lot on the PC. And the main decider for me picking this up was the fact it's not some cheap, crappy mobile version of the game. This is the full game on the Nintendo Switch with cross-platform across all systems. So anything you can do on other versions of the game, you can do on this one and join servers and play online. It's a great game to mess around with. Um, be creative and kill some time on and be able to take it on the go and play with real controls um, it really is a blast it's an iconic game and I think everyone's got to have Minecraft at some point or another just to play on and kill some time with but yeah guys, one thing I want to add real fast at the end here is that I love these little featured servers like this Hiveween one that I joined. It's all themed for Halloween so you get those cool Halloween vibes. You can view skins that you that you might want to download like cool spooky skins and you can meet and talk to other players in the game. Now one thing it has is a bunch of these cool little mini games that I've never experienced before and there's this one called Ghost Invasion which is really fun. You have to run around as either a ghost or a player and if you're a ghost you have to run around and try and infect the players by detonating yourself and turning them into ghosts. Now either the ghosts can win and infect all the players or the players can win and kill all the ghosts. Now another game that I quite liked is hide and seek where if you're on the hiding team you spawn as a random block and you have to blend into the environment and hide there hopefully not getting caught by the catchers and if you do get caught then it's you turn into a catcher and you have to hunt down all the other camouflage players and it kind of reminds me of a mini game that I used to play on PC on a game called Gary's Mod for the PC where you had to run around and hide as a piece of furniture until the catchers caught you so yeah guys, Minecraft for the Switch is a real treat. It's great for killing time, making friends and being creative. It's got two thumbs up from me and I'm pretty happy I picked it up. Now, if you have any questions, just ask them down below in the comment section and I'll do my very best to answer them. And as always, please subscribe, help us get to 1000 subs and hit the bell icon for notifications for new Switch content. And also check out the channel for loads more Switch content I've already uploaded. Um, thank you for watching guys. As always, I'll see you in the next video. Peace out.